Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our Thursday Night Lives. I'm Michael Herbridge. I am here with my wife, Janine. She will be watching the screen for questions and try to get my attention. Um, so if you have questions as we're going tonight, feel free to type them in. Tonight, I'm going to show you guys how to do these clay puzzled mushrooms. Um, this is one of the, the larger ones. We're going to make an even bigger one tonight. Um, it's using clay puzzling molds for the base. And then I'm going to show you how to do clay slabs with different textures. This is a new texture pad that we're going to be coming out with. It's the BP190. Um, it's the continuous flower uh, texture pad. Some of you might be familiar with our bark texture pad. I'm going to show how to do those tonight. This mushroom was done with a little bit smaller size. And then we used one of the rubber leaves to make the mushroom top on this piece. So if you've got some of the leaves, you can do that. Um, the smaller mushroom, they're going down in size, was done using the bark texture pad on the top of the mushroom. And I've got the really little one here was made using some of the leaves and the bark texture pad to do those designs in the top. I want to show you guys a little bit about kind of what we're going to do here um, and I didn't glue one of these mushrooms together so that you could see um, how it's going to work. So this is the the pedestal to one of the, the smaller mushrooms and it was done using one of the clay puzzling forms. I'm going to show you in a minute how that works but this is a vase mold and this is a piece that was created inside here. So we actually take and we make the piece and we turn it upside down so that the base of the mushroom is the wider part of the vase. The vase gets a little narrower at the bottom, so it's actually going to be done this way. So we're not going to puzzle all the way to the very top of the mold in there. We're just going to go up to a certain height depending how tall we want our mushroom to be. And then you'll see the bottom obviously is open, but then I also put a hole in the top. And the reason I put a hole in the top is so that you can take and put a um, piece of copper pipe or a, a wooden dowel, a stick, something in the ground that will come up to the top of this and it will hold it and prevent it from tipping over. So all of these mushrooms were made that way that they've got a hole up in the top of the stem that this then will sit over the top of that stake in the ground and it'll prevent it from tipping over. Even if you don't put the hole in, in the top, it um, a, a stake in there would allow it to tip you know this much but that hole in the top and making that hole just slightly bigger than whatever your dowel or your pipe whatever you're going to put in the ground old broomstick handles work great so look around you probably got stuff that you can pound into the ground or some type of a stake or something um, this mushroom here the, the one that i was showing this was actually done using mako's magic metallics um, this is their steel with the rapid rust and then the top of the mushroom, I did this one with the leaves impressed in it. And this was done with the copper and then the patina over the top. So this mushroom um, is done in non-fired finishes. So if you're a person that works with, you know, just non-fired finishes, there's options for you to do that as well. I did another top for this mushroom. This one was done in Mako's Element Glazes. It's their low fire kind of pottery look. And this is using... Um, one of their glazes, and I can't remember the name of this color, but it's it's kind of a reddish color in the element line. And then we sponged on the white cascade, and then I sponged on a color called wheat, which is kind of a, a wheat tan color. Um, and that gives you kind of a high fire look with a low fire temperature firing. Some of these other ones were done um, using, this was using one of Mako's new stoneware glazes, the stem of this was one of their new stoneware glazes. Um, this top was done with one of the new colors as well. This large mushroom, I'm going to set these back up on the shelf here so I don't knock these over and break them. Um, this tall mushroom, or the big one, this is one of Mako's jungle gems on here. I think this is wildfire is the, the crystal glaze. Um, so that has crystals in it that melt and give you the different colors. This has kind of a it's a red glaze with a yellow and green speckle in the glaze. So any of those crystal glazes will work great for this mushroom design. All right. So get these mushroom tops out of here. Um, there are a variety of, of different bases that you can use 
The ones that I used primarily was what used to be called our trio set of aces. There were three sizes. We now have four sizes. We just added the mini size. This is the third size. So it goes from the mini, and these were used on, on all of those mushrooms. It goes from the mini to the small, the small to the medium, and then the medium to the large. And I really like these shapes um, because of the fact that they kind of taper so I can turn them upside down. It gives me a good stem for the mushroom. But we're going to work tonight doing an even bigger mushroom. And I've got a couple other molds back here that we can work with. Now this one is, we're not going to work with this one. This is a BP300. This is the very first mold that we ever came out with. This too would make a great shape for a mushroom. It's going to be a little bit taller than this one, but not by a whole lot, about two inches probably. And then from there, we have this straight cylinder shape, and I think this is 16 inches high if I remember right. But we're going to actually work with the birdbath bottom pedestal tonight to make a really large, tall mushroom. And then for making your mushroom top that I'll show you in a little while, you can use, if you've got, whoops, our sphere molds, so we sell a ton of the sphere shapes. They're two-piece molds. These actually work well um, for some of the, the mushroom tops. If you want a more rounded top on there, you can use this as a form to lay your slab over the top of, kind of like a drape mold. Um, but we came out with a new design here. And this is the smooth inside and outside bowl. And the reason we call it that is there's no foot or anything on the outside of this piece. So we can drape clay over the top of this, or we can slump clay on the inside. If we do it on the outside, we can press things like leaves and textures and things into it on the outside. Um, so I'll show you how this works. And for the different size mushrooms, if you're doing a smaller mushroom, you're just going to do a smaller slab of clay that only comes down so far. On the big mushroom tonight, we're going to make a big slab that's going to come all the way down to the bottom of this or even larger because then this will sit over the top of our pedestal that we're going to make. How tall is that bird bath? The uh, bird bath is, um, that's a, a good question. I didn't bring a tape measure out here, but I've got a piece of paper here. So this is 11, uh, 16. 16, I'm going to say it's it's maybe a little, well, it's a little bit taller than this one. And this one, I'm almost sure on the website, is 16 inches. So it's about an inch taller. It's about 17 inches is that bird mouth pedestal. All right. So I'm going to open this mold up, and I'm going to flip the camera down here so you guys can see this. I've got the mold open. I'm going to do clay in both sides of this mold. And if you haven't used... The clay slicer, you can roll slabs of clay with a slab roller with a rolling pin because you want these to be fairly solid. Um, you could also do um, designs in here, like doing coils and balls of clay and pressing those in to create your own texture. And I'll just show you real quickly kind of how that would look. So if I just take and I roll some coils by hand or I could use um, an extruder, I can take and do that and then I can roll some balls of clay in here and press those in and do different sizes. Um, I was thinking right before the live um, several years ago when I had made a bird bath, I took pieces of wheat and I laid them inside of the mold and pressed the clay over the top of um, the wheat and then I pulled the wheat out after I took it out of the mold and it made it look like there was wheat growing up on the sides of the bird bath pedestal. But I'll just do a little section this way with the coils and the balls of clay to give you an idea of how this might look if you did this. So I can add another coil here. And then on the inside, I would just take and mash this together. I don't want to press super duper hard on here because I don't want to lose all of the texture of the coils and the balls of clay on the outside. I just want to smooth this on the inside 
so that I can't see where those pieces meet up. And when that comes out of the mold, I get this cool design. So the whole stem of my mushroom could be squiggly little worms and, and balls of clay to do that um, over the piece. But it would take a little bit more time to do this tonight. So I'm just gonna take clay. And like I said, I could roll out a slab. I could do this on the slab roller, um, but I'm just gonna take and use the clay slicer. If you haven't used these clay slicers, um, this purple bar is adjustable to get to whatever thickness of slab of clay you want. And so I'm going to cut the slab. And this is probably between a quarter to a half an inch. I'm working with a stoneware clay body. <laughs> yep, but you can do this with any type of clay body. Um, the nice thing with stoneware is it um, usually has some sand or some grog in the clay and so it adds a little bit of strength and stability when you're building big pieces like this raku clay works well too but these this clay slicer gives you very even slices of clay and i'm just laying these in the mold and then i'll show you what we're going to do with them and we just got these back in stock today they came in about four o'clock this afternoon um, we got these back in stock i know a few people are waiting for them they have been on back order for a while and those should ship out tomorrow for anybody who is waiting for them. But they're back on our website. I adjusted the inventory a little while ago to show that they are back in stock. So I'm going to lay these slabs of clay down in here. And they just happen to be almost the perfect size to fit down in here. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to squish them together where they meet. I don't need to score and slip. And I want to press pretty hard because I want to avoid having a lot of lines on the outside because I'm going to show you how we're going to add some texture to the stem of this mushroom. And we will get a little bit of a line there that will smooth on the outside. On the top here on this piece, um, I like this taper on here and I can use this mold either right side up with the mushroom top on this end or I can flip it over in this flaring out on the bottom gives us a little bit more stability of this piece standing in a garden. Anywhere that I've got areas that don't have clay, I'm going to take clay and press that over and squish that in to fill in those spots. Again, I'm going to squish it together to eliminate any lines on there. People always ask in workshops, do I have this pressed well? And what I look for when I look inside their mold is if I can see the lines where those pieces of clay meet up, I usually suggest that they press it a little bit more. I'm going to fill in the bottom on here, steal a little bit from this slab. And you want to try to keep the, the clay fairly uniform in thickness. If you get areas that are really thick and areas that are really thin, the thin areas will dry faster than the thick areas if you don't kind of slow that process by throwing plastic over it. And um, you can get some cracking. I'm going to set that mold aside. I'm going to pull this one out. My slab's positioned in here better. And I'm going to squish them together. I'm going to tear off this excess on the end. Fill in the ends here. Squish it down. We just posted the workshops for the uh, Branson, Missouri show, and this is one of the workshops that I'll be teaching there. You won't be doing a mushroom quite this big, but we'll have the molds for the smaller sizes. We just posted those workshops last night and this morning I got the, the last of those up. So that show is um, July 27th through 29th and I'm doing an eye painting class. I'm doing the gourd bird houses. We're doing the planters. Um, we're doing a metallic dry brushing on the dragonfly doing a whole bunch of different workshops. Eye painting, we have people requesting the eye painting class there. So check that out. They're all up on our website under the, the Branson workshop tab. 
All right, so I've got both halves of the mold filled in. Now, when I go to put them together, I need to squish the clay to attach the two halves. So instead of stealing clay from one side to fill that gap between the two, on one of these halves, I'm gonna add a coil of clay down below the edge of the mold. And that, that coil should be about the diameter of your pinky finger or a little bit larger. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. I'm just kind of rolling it a little bit and then kind of pinching it out because that clay is all going to get squished in there. So it doesn't matter if it's a perfectly even coil or the exact same thickness throughout. And it can be in pieces like this. It doesn't have to be one long continuous coil. But you want that coil down below the edge of the mold. A lot of times people put it up on the edge. And when they put it up on the edge like this, when you put the two mold halves together, that clay gets caught in between there and oozes out the side and the mold doesn't fit together well. So that coil should be down below that edge. Now you can take a wooden tool or a sculpting tool along the edge of the mold just to make sure you don't have clay going up past that seam line and just scrape that off if you do because that will make the mold fit together better. And then when I go to lift the mold halves up, so I've got that coil going all the way from the top down across the bottom and back up the other side. When I go to lift these molds up, I don't want to just lift this up and flip it because sometimes that clay wants to flop out. So I wrap my hands around the mold like this. So as I flip that over, if the clay wants to flop out, my hands will be there to kind of hold it in place. This one being such a big mold, sometimes at the top. So just kind of watch the top or kind of have one hand toward the bottom and one more toward the top as you flip it over. And I set that in place and then I pull my fingers out Drop that mold down. Each mold comes with a Velcro strap. And the strap will wrap around the mold. And you'll pull that nice and, oops, nice and tight. Let me open this up a little bit. Try that again. I usually hold the one end down. I'll do it more on the top of the mold so you guys can see. Hold it down and then I really pull tight on this one. So as I bring it around, I pull my finger out and I put that strap down so it's nice and tight. Now on the inside of the mold, you can see the coil going down the edge. On this particular mold, I can probably get my hand inside the mold and press that coil with my hand and attach it to the other side and fill in the gap. But if you can't get your hand all the way down in, we've got the press tool and that press tool um, comes with or without a flashlight. I like it with the light because that light shines in the mold and now as I go in here, I can take and squish that clay over to the other side of the mold and attach the two halves. And what I'm going to do then is that you can see I'm running the tool up and down in here to really smooth that clay out as I smack the camera. Whoops. It's like I'm going into a deep, dark cave here. I want to smooth this out so that I can't see the edges of that coil. Okay, if I can see coil like is on this side, it should be smooth. It's not smooth because it, you want it to be pretty. It's smooth because you want to make sure that it's attached to the other side. And now I have to tip it to get down into the, the bottom here better. And on the other end of the tool, there is a wood ball end. So sometimes to get into tighter areas, you need the wood ball end, other times the foam and will work just fine. I'm going to squish it as far down as I can get with my hand, and then I'm going to take that tool, and I'm going to squish that coil over to the other side. And then I'm going to smooth Oops, the camera again, and again. All right, and then I'll pick this up and work the rest of the mold here. Can get my hand in there is almost easier on this one. All the way down to the bottom, I can feel inside the mold. I can feel that coil as I squish it on the bottom and then up the other side. And 
And then I can actually, I'm running my hand up the side of the mold and I can feel if that coil, oops, let me take my watch off here, that'll be full of clay. I can feel that coil and then I can smooth it out anywhere that I need to. All right, so we'll pop this back up here. And I look inside, and tap the bottom a little bit there. Whoops, my flashlight went into the side. On the very top edges here then, I'm going to take a little bit of clay and squish that into here where I didn't have the coil. Now when we take this out of the mold, you're going to see what looks like it's not attached where the seam line is. So on the outside, the clay hasn't been pressed yet. It's, it's attached well on the inside. And that's why it's so important that when I look in there, I can't see the edges of the coil. But when I open it up, you will see a line there. And sometimes people freak out when they see that and they're like, oh no, it's cracking. And it's not necessarily that it's cracking. It is just that area where the um, clay meets up at that seam line, and then we're going to smooth that. Oh, and you know what? That's something I forgot to bring out here. Can you go back in the tools and grab a flexible metal rib? They're in the little drawers up above the... Um, I think it just says rib tools on the drawer. I have everything marked back. They're pretty good. But now where those pieces of clay met up, there's a little bit of a line on the outside. So a lot of times I can use my finger or I can use a wooden tool or those flexible ribs are nice because I can use those to smooth this out. Thank you. So these are, yeah, these are kind of flexible and I can run that right across that seam line there and fill it in. If there's a, a bigger gap, I can take a little coil of clay and I can press that into that opening and then I can go over and I can smooth this. And this too doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because we're going to add texture to this. So I'm just getting out any deep lines that are there. Now I'm going to grab a board to set this on. I can take this and stand it up. And I can just kind of grab the clay and gently wiggle the other half of the mold off. And I've got my pedestal. This is that area where the seam line is that I was talking about. And so that, I'm just going to take that rib down that side and smooth that and then take a little bit of clay coil and fill in any little gaps that are showing. And I'll turn this on its side in a minute to kind of show you what I'm doing. And I won't worry about doing the entire thing. I'll just do one area so you guys can, can see. So I've added some little snake coils on here and then I'm going to take that rib and I'm going to work that whoops, up and down that area to squish that clay into those openings. And I'll actually do it on the very top of this piece here so it'll be easier for you guys to see. All right, so on the top here, we've got a little, little gap. I'm just going to press a little clay in there squish it with my finger and then run that rib over to smooth that out. I'm not really too worried about this part because this is going to be the top of it and this is where I'm going to put the hole so that my stick or dowel or pipe can come through. So I'm just going to take a wooden tool and I'm going to poke it into the top of this to cut that hole in there. And I'll make that hole a little bit bigger than what my um, object would be, my stick or my, what I'm gonna use on this one is I've got some old broomstick handles. So I'm gonna make sure that this is big enough 
and also compensate for the fact that it's going to shrink while it dries and it's going to shrink in firing. So I'd rather be a little bit bigger than it needs to be rather than too small. I think that'll be about the right size. Squish these edges back. And then we've basically got our, our pedestal once we finish smoothing all those areas. Now, when I added texture to the pedestals of these mushrooms, this was done using um, the fluting tool from Zem Tools. And um, this comes with three different tips. And so on the larger objects, I would use the larger end. Um, it comes set up with the medium, and then there's also a small. And the way those work... You said it was stoneware clay you were using, right? Yeah, so this one has this one has some sand in the clay. And like I said, that makes it more stable, that it will stand up easier. Um, if I had done this large pedestal that we just did in earthenware clay, I might have to leave it sitting in half of the mold because earthenware clay, if it doesn't, there are earthenware clays that have sand in them. Um, but if I did this just in a smooth white earthenware clay, um, a big piece like that would be a little bit soft um, to take out of the mold and I might have to leave it sitting in half of the mold for a little while to dry. So this fluting tool was used then to carve out sections of the clay to get this texture. Um, Zem makes this set. I've also got some tools here from um, Diamond Core, and they make some fluting type tools as well that have, um, some of them have a little bit more of a square end on them. This one has a little dip and this one has a little dip. Um, these are a little bit pricier, but they're diamond core. They're great tools. You get an extra tip with them, um, but they're, I think, about 40 bucks a piece on those. The Zem set, we've got this on our website, learnfiredarts.com, um, $17.95, and it comes with the three different tips in the set. So I'll just show you here on this piece. Now, normally... To do carving like this, you would normally wait for the piece to firm up a little bit and get more to the leather hard stage, um, especially if you're working with a smooth clay body or a low fire clay body. Um, but the nice thing with these clay bodies that have this sand in them or grog in them is you can almost carve them immediately. So I'm just gonna stand up here and show you. So the tool just lays on the clay and then you just pull it down and it cuts out that indentation of clay and then I can lay it down and cut out another strip right next to it. Now I can kind of have some fun with it and I can do kind of some wavy S type lines on the piece rather than just straight lines. And I did that on one of the finished mushrooms. Let me get this one out of the way here. So these two have more of a wavy line going on them, this one and this one. So it doesn't have to be straight lines, but it kind of adds cool texture. We just had retreat here and I saw somebody in class on the underside of their mushroom, they use that tool to actually do, which kind of resembled the underside of a real mushroom, kind of the texture that you get in there. So this is our, our pedestal. And so you can have fun doing different textures. Or like I said, inside the mold, you can put some real wheat in there and then pull that wheat out after you take it out of the mold and it will leave an impression of the wheat design inside of the mold. That was the small tool? This was the medium. And so this is what it comes set with the medium. And then there is the large and the small. So this tool I have set up with the small. Can you show the name of it again too? Please? Yeah, the medium. And then this is the large tip to show the three of them together in the size. And so it's the the Zem, it's the fluting tool. And we've got this on our on our website. It's 1795 for the set. Comes with the handle and the three different tips 
on your tool. We don't sell the Diamond Core, but they're they're great tools, and they've got a lot of really cool tools too. And their website is just diamondcoretools.com is their website. All right. So next, I'm going to talk to you guys about the mushroom tops. And so, and I'm going to flip the camera around in a minute to go over by the slab roller. Um, but I'll show you how to do the leaf design in the, the mold or in the, in the clay. Um, this was the mushroom that we did the leaf top on. This one, the whole top of the mushroom was done using the large kiwi leaf. And so we did a slab of clay, and I'll show you in a minute with a slab, press this into it, and then um, pinched the clay off of the edge of the leaf, and then laid this over the, the mushroom top form to get kind of a sloped, rounded edge to this leaf design. So you can do mushroom tops that are just an entire leaf. You can do the mushroom tops that have the small leaves and the bark. And so this is done by placing leaves in the clay slab, and then we press over it with the bark texture while the rubber leaf is in there so that you get a nice leaf impression, but then you get that texture all around the leaves. And I'll show that in a, in a minute how that was done. Or you can do the bark all over, which this one just is using the bark. And in that case then, we have, you can use the large bark texture pad to do that, or I'll show you how you can just take the small one and press that into your clay slab to get different um, bark texture on there. That mushroom that had the red top, and this one I mentioned, this is a new texture pad that we're coming out with similar to the large bark one. It's gonna be 12 inches by 16 inches, so it'll be a little bit bigger than this, um, but it will have this repeated flower design throughout the the whole texture pad to be able to do a large slab like that. And those should be going into production next week. Um, we'll start casting those next week, so they'll start shipping sometime later next week. All right, I'm going to grab what I think I need over by the slab roller, and then I'm going to flip the camera around and we will do our mushroom tops. This new slab roller is, um, Nita Chimpo makes the slab roller and it's a, a really large slab roller. You can do very large slabs with it. Um, what I really want to show you is over on this side, you can see this little gauge here. And so this is what tells you the thickness of your slab of clay. On the top here, there's a dial. And as you turn this, both of the dials on the top turn at the same time. The roller goes up and down depending which way you roll it. And then this little gauge over here tells you. So right now, it's set at a one inch slab of clay. If I want to go a little bit smaller, I turn the dial. And just like that, both rollers now are a half inch apart. Um, depending how big your mushroom top is going to be, will determine how big of a slab you want to do. Put the camera up here so you can see the whole slab roller here. Um, and then there's a wheel on here where it will draw the clay through those rollers. And I'm going to turn this a little bit so you guys can see that better. So the clay is going to go on or in between our canvas. And so the slab roller comes with two sheets of canvas. You put your clay between here. You roll it through um, to get your slab of clay. Um, I worked with rolling pins for many years, and, and rolling pins worked great. Um, I went then to a smaller tabletop slab roller. Um, I had a Bailey slab roller and used that for many years. I, I really love that slab roller. I was like, oh my gosh, why did I ever do rolling pins before that? 
And then I recently got this large slab roller. I always wanted one of these, but I never had room in the studio to have it just sitting around because it is a big piece of equipment. Um, but I finally decided to, to break down and get this. And so it really, it, it's very good quality. Um, if you don't use the canvas, you can use the foam mats like I usually work on. That will give you a smooth slab. Um, but for this, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be adding texture to it anyway. So I'm going to show you. Someone has the dimensions and someone else who is dying on for has one and she said it's 30 by 50. The slab roller? Yeah, we've got the dimensions on our website. I put the dimensions on there for it, but that sounds right. 30 by 50 <laughs> sounds, sounds right. I mean, you can do really huge pieces of, of clay on here. Um, got my clay slicer here. Now, what a lot of people do with a slab roller when they want to make a large slab of clay is they'll take and piece together multiple pieces of clay on the slab roller. And I really don't recommend doing that. You're better off taking one big piece of clay and flattening it out. Now, obviously, I'm not going to take this giant thick piece of clay and be able to force this through um, the wheels. And so a lot of times I will flatten it out a little bit by pounding it down, or you can do kind of a slapping. And I'm, so I'm kind of hitting it down and pulling it towards myself to kind of stretch that clay. I would probably do this more on a, a wedding table or something that isn't going to be quite as loud. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the slab roller to be thicker. And I'm going to try and send it through it an inch. I have a feeling it's going to get hung up in here, but I want you guys to see what will happen if you try to force too much clay through. Get your clay out of the way here. Someone asked if you sell the smooth surface instead of the burlap. So the, the canvas that comes with it um, will leave a little bit of a texture. What I like to work with is the craft foam. And the craft foam you can get um, in the craft stores. And they come in like 11 by 17 sheets. They also do sell them in um, larger rolls as well. But what I found was one of the, the manufacturers out there had a smooth mat that they, they used. And what, it, what I believe it was um, was linoleum. And so there's a shiny side to linoleum and then the back side is kind of dull. And if you take and put two pieces of linoleum and put the dull side facing your clay and the shiny side facing away from the clay, you can roll that through and you'll get smooth slabs with that as well. Bailey's sells a slab like that, that, that is that type of material. And they have, it's like duct taped together at the end where the two pieces are. And it's kind of a pocket that you can put through. Otherwise, um, Stone Leaf Pottery out in Colorado sells um, a material that is something that they make that is a really cool material too that, that the clay will go through and will be very smooth when you roll that through. So I'm going to show you guys how thick the slab is. So this is a one inch thick slab. Now it stretched that piece of clay out in this direction. So to get it so that, and normally I wouldn't move this over, but for you guys to be able to see it better, I'm going to take the slab and instead of leaving it on here this long way, I'm now going to turn it this way. And what will happen when I lower this a little bit more is it's going to stretch the clay out in the opposite direction. So rather than trying to force a, a two inch slab of clay through here at a half inch, roll it through at an inch, get it reduced a little bit, pick it up, flip it over, and so then it will stretch the clay out the other way. And now I'm going to lower this down to a half an inch, and then I will roll it on through. And this nice wheel handle on here makes it really easy too. There's a, a crank handle that comes with it. Um, I like the wheel is really easy to, to work with. So now I've got a nice big 
slab of clay to work with. And so this is where now I can determine how big of a slab I want to work with. So I can kind of set my bowl on here and I could cut it around the edges of this bowl or what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it actually bigger than the bowl and so when I drape it over the top of the bowl it's going to come out on the edges and I can kind of ruffle the edges and make it so it's a little bit bigger for this nice big mushroom stem that we're working with. So I'm just using a wooden tool. A lot of people will use a needle tool and the needle tool can damage the canvas. Um, if you're working with the foam pads, it can really do damage to the foam pads as well. So we'll set that out of the way for a minute. And then I can take some of my smaller rubber leaf forms. I've got some maple leaves here. Um, I had a bunch of other leaves. Where did I set them here? Oh, here they are. Oh, okay. I buried them here. I got too much stuff out here. So I've got a handful of different leaves. I've got lemon leaves. I've got oak leaves. And I'm just going to take these and I'm going to place them texture side down randomly. And I'm, I'm going to turn the leaves in different directions so they're not all facing the same way. I want them to be going in different directions. Some will be pointing in, some will be pointing out. And I'm just setting them on first. Get another little maple leaf in here. Maybe this one. Another maple leaf in here. And another little leaf there. All right, so I think I've got enough leaves in here. So you can see the leaves just sitting on the clay. Now, I can take the little bark texture pad, and I can just take this, and I can go over and I can press into this clay, and I'm going to press right over the leaves, because that's going to press the leaf down into the clay, and I want the leaf to be fairly flush with the slab of clay. And this will also add texture. And I'll pick this up so you guys can see it after I get this all pressed. The alternative would be taking the larger bark texture pad, and I could lay that over the top of this. But for this big of a piece, it doesn't cover the whole piece. So I would take and roll this probably through the slab roller. It would force it in. Then I'd have to pick it up and lay it on there and roll it through a second time. The thing is, sometimes you'll get kind of a line in the middle where those, those pieces meet up. And so that's where I kind of like using the small one. Or I can use the large one and just go like this and press. And then if I have areas where I don't have a lot of texture, I can just lay it down, put some more texture in. sheets too with a high thread count and they don't have much texture. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep, sheets would be good. Um, the thing with sheets is, you know, after if you're doing a lot of rolling, they will absorb moisture, kind of like canvas does. Um, and so they might get a little wet if you're going to do a lot of slabs. Um, just have some extra sheets then that you can do that. That's a really good idea to use sheets. That would give you a nice smooth surface. Yeah, and another person said they use heavy cotton pillowcases. So oh, yeah. Same type thing. Oh, yeah, and a pillowcase would give you a, <coughs> kind of a sleeve to just put the clay in. And... All right, I think I've got it a little bit right in the middle here. All right, so I've pressed over the whole piece to get the bark texture over it. The leaves are all flush, but the edges here are still kind of thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with that part texture pad and I'm going to kind of taper those edges. So I'm going to go around and I'm just going to press along that edge to kind of round it and flatten it a little bit. And I won't have that clunky thick edge. Okay. 
And then I can either take, if I want to slump this into the mold, I could pick it up like this and I could flip this over and put that clay into the inside, but I actually want it on the outside. And so a lot of times people will struggle to try and pick up a slab like this to be able to lay it over the form. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay that canvas back on there, flip this over, peel the canvas away from this side, and then I can set my bowl in, pick up this canvas, flip it over, and it will drape over the top of my bowl. I'm going to put my canvas underneath here just so that when the clay overlaps and, and goes over the edge, um, it won't stick to my table. I'm grabbing a needle tool because at this point I want to pull the rubber leaves out. So I'm just going to grab the edge of them and pull those out. And some of you might be thinking, well, I could use real leaves to do this, and you could. Um, all of these rubber leaf forms are made from real leaves. The forms for them are made from real leaves, so the texture is the same. What's nice about the rubber leaf forms is the thickness of them leaves a deep indentation. If you've ever used real leaves to make impressions on something and then try to do like a wash of color over it to pick up all the texture of the leaf, sometimes um, those leaves are so thin that they don't leave a nice deep edge and it's hard to see the edge of the leaf itself. So the, the thickness of these <coughs> give you a nice deep impression. All right, and now I'm just gonna kind of gently take and press this around and I want kind of some little ripples in this so that it's not a perfectly smooth top on my mushroom. And then I'll let this dry until it's firm enough um, to be able to stand on its own and then I'll flip it over and take it off. The other thing that I could do would be to kind of bend out the sides a little bit. And if I went with an even bigger slab of clay, these would really, it would hit the table, it would go out, and then I could ruffle it that way too. But I'm just gonna lift these edges up a little bit. And if the clay is too soft, if you're working with a smoother clay that doesn't have the sand in it, it may not stay raised like this. You can stuff paper under there, some sponges, whatever you wanna put under there um, to raise that up a little bit. Don't leave this sitting on the outside of the mold for days. Um, you know, check this after an hour, two hours, um, because as this dries, this clay is going to shrink and it's going to get tighter on that bowl. We purposely made this so it didn't have a foot on the bowl, so it's completely smooth. So there's nothing for the clay to get caught on, but um, it will, um, if it's on there too long, it can get kind of tight and you could get some cracking. So after an hour or two, check it. Don't put it in front of fans. Don't try to dry it. Don't put it on top of the kiln. You know, just kind of let it dry naturally um, so that you don't get cracking with that. So this is, hold this up kind of closer. You can see the leaf impressions. You can see the bark texture in there, which gives you a really cool mushroom top. And you can use any type, you know, obviously textures and things in there when that new texture pad comes out with the flower design, um, that one, you do have to lay it on there, press it, probably lay it on there on something this big, and press it again <clears throat> and just line it up. I wouldn't send that one through the slab roller. Um, I would just press that individually on that piece. Now, if you want to do something that's a little bit smaller, and set this one aside. I'm going to have to grab another form real quick. So maybe I only want to do a smaller top. So we'll do one of the leaves. And I'm going to take a smaller piece of clay here. I'm just going to take these straps. I'm not going to worry about wedging it because this piece probably won't get fired anyway. 
normally I would really wet this blade, but just so we can do a small piece quickly. I'm going to raise this back up. Whoops. How do you attach the top to the base? So then, that's a good question. How do you attach the top to the base? So you can, if you're doing glazing, you can set it together in firing with the, um, yeah, it's just my needle tool pro. No. Um, whoops, turning the wrong wheel here. Um, so you can, <coughs> you can attach it if you're glazing it just by putting it through um, or setting it together in glaze firing. Or I'm going to go, it didn't, this is a, a thinner piece. I'm going to run it through this way and skip, make it a little skinny. So set it together. The glaze will fuse it together. Or after it comes out, if you fire it as two separate pieces, you can glue them together with just like an E6000 or um, some type of glue to glue them together. Can it be attached during the other hard stage at all? Or just... You could. You could attach it um, in the leather. In, you could attach it, you know, when it's firm, when the stem is firm enough to attach them, you could score and slip and attach them together. Um, I found that I liked just glazing them and <coughs> using them in that glaze firing because it was I didn't have to worry when I was painting it about getting the mushroom top color on the mushroom bottom. Um, so I really, that's how I did it, but you could put it together and then glaze it. And, or if you're going to do it in like stains or something or acrylics. All right, so we've got our um, smaller slab here. Now I've got the large kiwi leaf. And I can take and roll that back through the slab roller, or I could just press it in by hand. But we'll put it back through the slab roller. Canvas here. I'm trying to watch the screen as I do this to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so we got the clay. I'm going to roll it through with the leaf now. I've got the leaf rolled into the slab. I can just take and kind of tear off that excess clay around the edges. And then instead of having that thicker, clunkier edge, and I hope I didn't make this too thin, I can just take and kind of bevel this edge just by pinching a little bit of the clay off of the edge. And I'll do that all the way around, except at the very base of the leaf, I'm going to leave it thicker. If you go too thin with your slab on your leaf form, when you go to peel it off, it wants to rip and tear. So now I can just take and pull the two apart, and I've got my leaf top. Now on the mold, I can take this, and I can just lay this over the top and kind of gently press it down to get the rounded shape that I want with that. So you don't have to go the full length, and that's why we made it the size that we did. The other thing that you can do, if you have some of our sphere molds, this little bitty mushroom, this one I wanted kind of a real rounded, domey looking top on it. I use just half of this as the five to six inch sphere. On this particular leaf, I probably would go a little bit bigger size, but I could use that sphere mold to make my leaf like that, just over the, the top of that to give it a nice rounded surface too. So you don't have to have this mold, but this is nice because it will give you all the different sizes. But if you have the sphere molds, 
those will also work good. I experimented with different bowls and things. I found some of them that were too flat on the bottom, gave me a mushroom top that was a little bit too flat. It wasn't rounded enough, and that's why we came out with, with this form here. All right, any other questions? All right, so um, let me look at my list here and see what I haven't covered yet. Um, all right, so the slab roller. If you guys are interested in getting one of these, um, Shimpo will drop ship these for us. They have a lot of these slab rollers in stock right now. And so we've got it on our website and it has free shipping in the US 48, um, $974. I believe that's the best price in the market right now. I know somebody had posted earlier on, on one of my posts, they had posted a competitor that had a, a really good price on it too. Um, but I know that we are cheaper than them, so I just kind of hid that comment on there. I know that person didn't intend to, to do that, not realizing I'm selling these slab rollers. So that's why I hid that, that comment on there. Um, so it's about a week to two weeks they would ship out and you would get those. They would be shipped right to your house. So $974, we've got them on our website. Um, unfortunately, if you're in, I see somebody from Canada on there commenting. Um, unfortunately, um, Hawaii, Alaska, and other countries, you would have to pay the shipping. And this slab roller is, I think, 160 pounds, and it comes in several different boxes. I think there were five boxes total. It's very easy to assemble. Um, <laughs> the, it, 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 it honestly, like this whole unit here, all comes as one piece. There's actually four screws that hold this onto the table. The legs have um, some screws that bolt the legs on. The table, the tops on here actually have snaps that snap down and hold that on. So if you need to move this, like I had it out in um, the other part of the studio and I had to get it through a doorway into this room. So all I had to do was release these four little and I'll show you how, how easy it is to pull these off. So the screws that hold this whole top section on here, they're little thumb screws that I can turn by hand. Diana confirms that they're easy to put together. Yeah, there's just a, a little washer and a little um, thing that goes on there. I can't think what those are called with the little things on it. And you just oh, go like that and put it in. It's like a nut, but it's got little wings on it. A wing nut. A wing, is it a wing nut? I think, that, yeah, I think you're right, it's a wing nut. So that's already tightened back on there. So those, and then the, the handle, it comes with, there's a little Allen wrench that this slides on. And then there's a little screw in here that the Allen wrench you just tighten. So the handle is on there. Um, and then the, the boards get screwed. There's three screws on each side that hook it up to the thing that, that this clamps onto. So very easy to put together. Um, so $974, free shipping in the US 48. Um, Waukesha Show, a lot of people have been asking about the Waukesha Show. And that, um, the classes will be up probably next week. We're still waiting for some information from some of the instructors. That show was in August. The Branson Show in Branson, Missouri is July 27th through 29th. I've got classes up. There's several other people that will be teaching there that'll have classes as well. Um, we've got the, the molds for the mushroom top, the vase set, so that four-piece set now is called the quad set. It used to be the trio set. That quad set is the BP-508. It's a kit that comes complete with the four vase molds and the top mold, and that is on special for $175. We have several of those in stock right now. so. <laughs> The first orders that come in will ship right away. Mm -hmm. Anybody who ordered them this last week, some people saw them on the website and ordered them. I think all of those orders will be shipping um, tomorrow and Monday that we currently have. Um, can, can you just sell the roller portion that gets attached to an existing workbench? No, unfortunately, Shimpa only sells this as the, the whole table unit because this, honestly, is probably the most expensive part of it. But I know that... Um, What's the other, there's another company out there that does sell them that way, that they sell just that part that you can attach to a, to a table. But that, so the roller, this other roller is down in the table. So I don't know that that would, I don't know how that would work. 
because there's actually an opening. There's both sides of this are clamped down, and there's an opening where that bottom roller is in the table. So I'm not sure how that would work if you did just get that and try to put that on a table. Um, yeah, that's everything that I've got on my okay, there's my list questions. here. So Jean said there's some questions well, here. Will you be at the Midwest Ceramic Show this fall? No, I probably won't be at the fall show. I know last year they, they had that fall show. Um, fall is a really busy time for us, and I don't think I'm going to be able to make that. The last show that I'll be doing is um, South Carolina is in September. I want to say the end of September, I think. And then I'll be in... Um, Texas Art Education Conference and the New Jersey Conference will be the only traveling that I'll probably be doing this fall. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So Stacy, a little while ago, Stacy Stellar Quest. Yeah. yeah it said I'm on the website and you have it explain the ordering of the base mold plus one top mold. But then she said I need to clarify if I order a vase if it includes one top mold. No, so on the on the website, that's a good question, Stacey. So we set it up um, that you can order the whole set. So there's a drop-down box, and you can order the individual bases, vases, and you can order the top separately, or there's one in there that's the complete set, and that was the one for 175, has all four molds and the top. Otherwise, you can order the top is listed in there separately as a mold, and that is BP... 509 is just the top mold, and then the BP 508 kit, the molds are listed separately in there, and then the quad vase set is also listed in there that you can order the individual sizes. So if you're looking at the one that shows the set, it also shows the individual ones in there. If you want everything, order the set. If you just want certain sizes, you can order the individual ones and then order the top mold as well. When are you in New Jersey? Um, I will be in New Jersey, um, uh, when is that, in October, I believe. Close to oh yeah, it's, it's actually, I will be in um, New Jersey on Halloween, oh, um, so it's the end of October. In Holmdell, wherever that is, they don't, they, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure where that is. I, <laughs> I can't even remember where I will be for the, the New Jersey Art Education Conference, um, it's for art teachers, school art teachers. Um, but if there's somebody in the area that wants to do a workshop around the end of October, that show is on a Monday and Tuesday, I believe. Um, so like that weekend before, I could probably do something if somebody wants to try to set something up. Just shoot me an email, oh, she, and I can get you, you know the information. where you're going to be in New Jersey? I can't remember the name of the town. Okay. I know it's at a Hyatt Regency. That's all. It's a, it, mm -hmm. I've been there before, but they've, <laughs> they've had it in Long Branch for probably the last eight or nine years. And they moved it now back to New Brunswick. I believe it's New Brunswick, I think, that is where it's going to be this year. Okay, and then one other thing. Uh, I know Florida was a bad experience for you last year, but will you have a show there this year? But you went there. I went there. I was there in February this year. So they have a spring it was show. Last year that it was there. Yeah, it was a, a, they have a spring show and a fall show. And it was not this past February, but the February of last year. Um, where I had the accident on the way down there. But I was there this year, and, and everything is is good now. My knee is good, and, and so I'm, I'm good to go. I don't have any restrictions anymore. Someone said you should come to Canada. I know. I, I <laughs> should come to Canada. There's a lot of places I should go, and I there just aren't enough hours in the day to to do it, and I'm, I'm trying to cut back on the amount of travel that, that I do. So I could be home and get orders out, and then people don't get mad at me when orders don't get out fast enough. <laughs> Plus, we have a daughter who lives out of state that we need to spend some time traveling to see, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so Texas. Texas. <laughs> we'll, we'll be in Texas more frequently. One of our daughters is living down there. So. <laughs> and she's in uh, College Station area. So, <laughs> But I'll be in Dallas for the Texas Art Education Show, Dallas area, uh, in November, sometime in November. So... All right, well, we will be back again. Um, the next live I'm going to do, I've had a lot of people asking about, let me grab the samples here, um, doing glass in ceramics. And um, I did have a comment that somebody made on one of these posts that I did height as well. Um, so firing glass in ceramics is...
the glass will get fractures in the glass because it's not compatible with the clay. And um, there's a, you can put epoxy or a sealer over the top of it. So these were some bowls with glass inside. So my next slide will be covering this. Um, we may possibly do <coughs> raking of the hot glass inside the kiln as well. Um, so somebody had said, I had kind of joked in one of my posts, like it's kind of dangerous reaching in there. And it is if you do something stupid. Um, but if you use common sense and, and follow things, it's a very safe process to do. And the finished result isn't food safe. Um, but when you seal the glass, you don't have to worry about the fractures in the glass and having sharp shards and things. So um, the person whose comment I hid that they put in there about how dangerous that is and how people get slivers, they didn't realize probably that you could do a sealer or an epoxy on top of it. So um, that'll be our next live. And then I'll be doing some, some other things um, coming up. We've got some other new ideas and things that we'll be coming out with. So thanks for joining us tonight. If I missed any of the questions, I'll try to go back through later and catch anything that I missed. Um, if you have additional questions, the best thing is to email me at info at claypuzzling.com or you can email through the website. Our website is now set up that if you go in and you do a conversation through the website, through the contact us, it actually puts everything into one spot for me that I can see every response and I don't have to search through emails and, and try to find things. If you guys send me messages on Messenger, it can be really challenging because some days I get 100 messages on Messenger and stuff just gets buried. And if I, today I spent almost an hour going back trying to find a message. I knew I had to respond to somebody. Um, I know there's somebody out there waiting for a, they were missing one of the star cutters in an order and I can't find where they messaged me and I can't remember who that person is. I saw the message, we got more of the star punches in and I owe them one of the star punches. So if you're watching, send me an email or a message and, and let me know um, to remind me of that. So I'm still getting through a lot of the emails and getting back to, to messages. So if you're still waiting to hear from me, um, I will be getting back to you. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight, you guys. Take care.